Do you know that Brazil has the largest number of uncontacted people? Do you know what Yoruba math is? Stay tuned to find out. I'm Wade. I'm Ruby. So, you've just been back from SA not long ago, right? Yeah, that's right. So, I've gone back to SA to visit my family and friends after the crazy mm -hmm. pandemic and all the craziness that took place. Yeah. But it is certainly good to be back. Good, good. Have you been to the other SA? The other SA? South America. Oh, um, no, I have not yet, but I would love to go to South America at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about South America, it is actually Fun Day's theme for the month. Yes, it is. So, Ruby, what do you, is the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about South America? Um, I'm going to go with the famous tropical rainforest. Yeah, the Amazon. Mm -hmm. It is known for its vastness and biodiversity. And yes. actually, an interesting fact, Jeff Bezos named his company Amazon for that particular reason. Really? I thought it's just because it's the first alphabet. Actually, it is both. Anyway, back to South America. Mm -hmm. Did you know that it is home to the largest number of uncontacted people in the world? Wait, what do you mean by uncontacted people? Well, as in like they remain or they choose to be isolated from modern society. Mm -hmm. The Brazilian government actually estimates that there are around 77 to 84 uncontacted tribes in the country. That sounds like a lot of people. Well, actually, it's made out of tribes that are some large, mm -hmm. that accounts for several hundred people, mm -hmm. and then some actually there are only you know, several surviving members. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, Ruby, why do you think that they choose to be in this isolation? Yeah. I mean, they don't have AC, like what we're enjoying right now. No. They don't have McDonald's. They don't have There's Wi-Fi. There's no Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. Well, if I had to guess, maybe they choose to stay isolated so that they can live up to their traditions and live with the nature. That is a great guess. And with ongoing deforestation in the Amazon and even violence against them from loggers and developers, they are sometimes forced to flee their home to go even deeper into the forest. And additionally, some may even still have memories from when they were oh. captors and enslaved. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when people try to approach them, you see them actually shooting arrows and fighting against people yeah. and the outsiders, just like yeah. we've seen in Avatar. That makes a lot of sense. And because they've been living in isolation, I would guess they lack immunity to diseases that seem common to us. Yeah, yeah, very much. Um, exposing them to outside world and outside mm -hmm. people can cause serious health risks. And in Brazil, these uncontact groups actually have come under a lot of threats, especially under the current president, President Bolsonaro. Well, I can't say development is a bad thing, but deforestation doesn't just affect the tribal people. It actually affects us all, as the Amazon rainforest is known as the law of the earth, mm -hmm. meaning it puts us all in danger. Yeah, that's absolutely right. The Amazon plays such a critical role mm -hmm. in the climate regulation. It actually accounts for between 6 to 9% of the total oxygen of the world. Is there anyone doing something about this? Well, yeah, so there are obviously people that fight against deforestation of the Amazon. Um, and there are different groups that want to protect it because they see the importance of preservation. And then when it comes to the indigenous people, there's actually a group that was created called Funai. So Ruby. I guess you know what I'm about to ask you next. I do. What does Funai stand for? What do you think? I am going to go with um, Forest Unit Natural Improvements. You are so wrong. It was actually a trick question. Funai actually stands for National Indian Foundation. Wait, where is the U and A? Well, actually it's translated from Portuguese. Oh. Well, how do you say it in Portuguese? I'm not even going to attempt to say it, sorry. <laughs> Fine. So what do they do? FUNAI, the National Agency for Indigenous Affairs, works to protect the land as well as the well-being of the country's uncontacted people. But it's sad to say in recent years with the current government, they are less and less funded with the reality of losing their homes becoming more and more of a reality. So much to do, but with limited support. That's awful. Yeah, it is quite sad. Maybe onto a lighter topic. Let's talk about the broader culture as well as the people. 
The South Americans, similar to South Africans, mm -hmm. are very affectionate people and communal. So even though they don't share their food necessarily like we do in Asia, mm -hmm. they do share a particular drink. Oh, that's interesting. What is it exactly? So I actually heard about this drink, mate. A friend introduced to me, she's from Argentina, yeah. when I was back in college. Mm -hmm. um, so it was quite interesting because it has nothing I've ever tasted before. So how is it made? So there's actually three main components to mate. Mm -hmm. And it has one, the dried leaves um, that is brewed of an evergreen shrub or from tree related to holly. And the second thing you need is the ornament mate cup which is commonly made from wood, um, glass, or a calabash gourd, which is a type of plant. And then the last thing you need is a yerba mate straw. This metal straw is called bambila. So the straw is basically used to filter the mm -hmm. leaves at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you sip from it. So that's the main three components to using mate. Wow, that's pretty smart, the, mm -hmm. the straw thing. Yeah. So how does it taste like? Well, it actually has this earthy herbal aroma uh, with a bitter taste. Sounds like a combination of coffee and tea. You're right. It's actually said to have the strength of coffee, the health benefits of tea, and the euphoria of chocolate all in one. Wow, nice. So how do you drink it? Are there any certain adequate around it? That's actually a good question. There are a few rules and etiquettes around drinking mate since it's a communal drink. Mm -hmm. So one, never help yourself to mate. Mm -hmm. So the person that serves the drink, it's called a sabedor. Oh. So you never go and take, but you are served. Okay. The second part is that the sabedor always has the first mate pour. Mm -hmm. And it's not because that they're extra special or anything. It's more for that they can control the taste, the strength of it, and in order to be able to serve the best mate. Okay. And the third is that the mate should always be passed clockwise. Mm -hmm. So Ruby, do you prefer like a strong coffee or a weaker coffee? I guess stronger. Stronger? Yeah. So you would want to sit on the left side of mm -hmm. the sabedor because they would be the person who gets the strongest oh, brew. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fourth is that you don't touch the bambile. Mm -hmm. So like I mentioned that it's the straw part is, is what helps filter. Yeah. And so you don't want to stir it up and get the things stuck in it because then you're not able to drink from it. That's smart. One of the final points is that you should try to drink the drink as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Don't nurse it, right? So they pour it for you and you have say roughly around two to three minutes to drink it. This way you can be respectful of other people who would also want to have the drink. That's true, they're waiting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Well, judging from the color of the drink, it looks healthy. Well, it is. Um, though there are more research that still needs to be done in this topic, mm -hmm. it is said that it provides an energy boost. Of course. It has rich in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. It can help lose weight. Ooh. I know, that's a good one, right? Yeah. Uh, and it also helps with concentration mm -hmm. and it's a great for your digestive system. So how did it all come about? Well, uh, looking on some research, they say this story comes about where the original consumers of this was the Guarani people uh, who actually lived in what we today call Paraguay. Mm -hmm. And it is north of Argentina, south of Brazil, and part of Uruguay and Bolivia. Mm -hmm. And early on in, when they consumed it, they chewed it. And obviously as time moved on, it's morphed into what we know it today. Wow, that actually sounds very interesting. I hope I get to try it sometime. Yeah, you definitely should. It is quite interesting. <laughs> well, so that concludes our video for today on South America. I hope that you have learned something useful. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. Be sure to visit us on Funday website, funday.asia. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.